All right, section 11.8, expected value. I'm gonna put that up there. It seems to be less in the way over there. All right, um, we're going to compute expected value, uh, use it to solve applied problems, and determine the average payoff or loss in a game of chance. Um, I don't know if I can move this because it is kind of in the way here. I'm afraid I'm going to have to close it. Um, it doesn't want to move. All right. Sorry. Um, expected value is used to determine premiums on insurance policies, weigh the risks versus the benefits. Um, in business ventures and um, game of chance, that's the gambling, what will happen if the game is played repeatedly. Um, guys, I really want to point out this right here. Um, long run. In the long run, long run, long run, long run. What does that mean? It means um, we're not talking about what happens if I um, uh, play a game of poker once. We're not talking about if I play, a, um, you know, the um, slot machine 10 times. We're talking about if you do a slot machine a million times, and I'm not exaggerating, like literally a million times. Um, so th those are the kinds of things that we're talking about. Um, anyway, the way to compute expected value, you multiply each possible outcome by its probability, and then you add them up. Multiply each possible outcome, and then add them up. All right, so find the expected value for the number of girls, for a family with three children. So we first have to figure out um, what's the possibility for uh, three children. We could have um, zero girls. Um, we could have um, one girl in a family of three. We could have two. I-R-L-S, or we could have three girls. All three of them could be girls. Okay, so what would be the outcome if they were, if we had zero girls? We would have um, a boy, and then a boy, and then a boy. They would all three be boys, and there's only one way to do that one way. All right, um, how about one girl? Well, the first one, I'm going to stop with the braces um, and start abbreviating. The first one could be a girl, and then they could have a boy, and then a boy. Or the second one could be a girl, so they could have boy, girl, boy. Or the last one could be, uh, their youngest could be a girl. So to have one girl in the family, we can do it this way or this way or this way. So there's three different ways we could have one girl in the family. Two girls, same idea. We could have two girls and then a boy. We could have a girl and then a boy and then a girl or we could have a boy and then two girls. Again, we have three different ways we can do that. So this, 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 three different ways, or three girls. So girl, girl, girl. Only one way to do that. All right. So how many total different ways do we have? We've got the one plus the three, plus the three, plus the one. So there's total eight different um, possible ways we can do this. So this is the outcome. 
and um, eight total ways. This is the outcome. We're looking for the probability. There's one way to do it out of eight possible. Now we have one girl. We have three ways we can do that out of eight possible. Now we have two girls. Oops, plus, sorry. Two girls, three ways to do it. And now we have three girls and one way. All right, so zero times anything is gonna give me zero. Now I have, guys, remember to multiply a whole number times a fraction, right? You multiply the top, you multiply the bottom. Multiply the top, multiply the bottom. So we've got one times three is three, eight times one is one, two, ti two times three is six, one times eight, three times one, and if the denominator is the same, we add the numerators. So 3 plus 6 plus 3 gives me 12. And I would reduce that. All right. Um, so 1.5 is our answer, our expected value. And so what does that mean in terms of the question? Well, um, if we have a million, if we're looking at a million families um, that have three children, you can expect 1.5 of them, you can't have 0.5 of a girl, but you, 1.5 of the um, children to be girls. In other words, about half, which makes sense. So boy, 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 yep. If we record the number of girls in many different three-child families, the average number of girls for all of the families will be about half of the children. All right, automobile insurance company has determined the probabilities for various claim amounts to the nearest $2,000 for drivers age 16 through 21, as shown in the table. So um, there's a 0.7 probability that um, that driver isn't going to make any claim at all whatsoever. Um, there's a 0.15 or 15% probability that they will have a claim of 2,000, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So calculate the expected value and talk about what that means. So the outcome times the probability plus the outcome times, uh, I think I'm going to do parentheses. times, there we go, um, the outcome, insurance company has to pay $4,000, probability that they have to pay $4,000, they have to pay 6000 probability, Pay 8,000, probability, and 10,000, and the probability. All right, so you would multiply all these, add them up, and um, you would get a number. Um, uh, I think it's 1100, but uh, we're, we're gonna check the number on the next slide. But what does that mean, um, the expected value? So with this, um, the insurance company can expect to pay on average um, 
whatever this number is. So what they want to do, yeah, it was 1100 Okay. In the long run, the average cost of a claim is $1,100. They're going to have to pay basically $1,100 for each driver. Not every driver is going to get $1,100. Some drivers are going to get $10,000. Most drivers aren't going to get anything at all, but on average, in the long run, each claim is going to cost the company $1,100. So that means the insurance company has to make sure that they charge more than $1,100, otherwise they're not going to make any money. Okay, so that determines how much they charge for um, insurance premiums. Um, expected value for a game, you multiply the gain or loss by its probability and then add. Okay, so find the expected value of betting a dollar on the number 20 in roulette. Um, if the ball lands on that number, you are awarded $35 and get to keep the dollar that you paid. If it lands on any other slot, you get nothing and you lose the dollar. All right, so this is the outcome. This is the probability. You multiply these together. Outcome times the probability. You multiply these together, and then you add them up. So outcome times the probability. Outcome times the probability, forgot my three. All right, um, again, whole number times a fraction, 35 over 38 minus 37 out of 38 equals negative two out of 38 which you convert that to a decimal, negative 0 0.05. Now let's talk about what that means, okay? So it's negative, which means you're gonna end up losing money. And we're talking five cents for each game you play you're going to end up losing. I'm not talking about if you play one game and you win, whatever. I'm not talking about if you play 10 games. I'm talking about if you play 100,000 games, you can expect to lose five cents for each game you play. This is for each game you play. Okay. All right.